Our guest in the studio uh, to talk about some of the stories of the day is Independent TT for Wicklow and East Carlo, Stephen Donnelly. Stephen, good afternoon to hey, you. Hey, Sean, how are you? Thanks Not for having me in. How's, uh, how is life as, as an Independent TD? Was it what you expected it would be like? I didn't know what to expect, to be honest. I'd never done anything like it, so I hadn't been a councillor. Hmm. I'd never been in a political party. I don't think I'd ever even been on a committee. Uh, for, for <laughs> Sorry, you're not anything. pronouncing it right. It's a comedy. Comedy. Yeah. Um, so I didn't really know what to expect. Um, it has been uh, intense. It has been very fast moving, incredibly rewarding, uh, difficult. Uh, it certainly stretches you, especially as an independent, because you're not slotting into a party. With you know, you, I, mm. I arrived on the first day. Um, I didn't really know where to go. I just rocked up to Kildare Street Gate, and I didn't even know if they'd let me in. Um, yeah. But the ushers, to their credit, uh, as I walked in, said, "Deputy Donnelly, how are you?" and and let me in. So I just walked straight into the into the onto the plinth uh, in Kildare Street, and Sam Smith walked up to me, and I'd been a, 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 an avid reader of Sam Smith for years, so I was I was slightly starstruck. And then uh, you get a liaison officer, and I had a fantastic liaison officer who walked out of the building, and I hadn't. I mean, I kind of rocked up at four o'clock on a Tuesday evening. Or something. Hadn't Did told you even know when to turn up? Did you get a letter no. or anything? No, there was a letter, but I, I, I didn't open it. <laughs> <laughs> so I had absolutely no idea uh, what to do. And sat down with some of the independent TDs. We looked at forming this technical group, which, yeah. which has uh, come together and uh, has been fantastic to be a part of. There's 16 of us in that. Uh, but that's where it started. I walked in with uh, with my school bag and said, right, I'm from Wicklow, East Carlow. Uh, w- what do I do? And, 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 and the liaison officer presumably, you know, tells you where the paper clips are and, and, and more importantly, I suppose, all the procedures in there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because it's it's formal. You know, you, you, you go in and you've got the Kian Korla and uh, you can speak at certain times and not at order ti- other times and there you've this thing called order of business and then you've standing orders and and uh, and it goes on and you you have to figure out when you can speak and when you're not allowed to speak and you know when when mm. to give it a give 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 it a bit of a give it a bit of a saber rattle and when you say it's been rewarding in what way well what i have found uh, and i i mean this in total sincerity is you hear, I've heard for years, uh, members of parliament, elected representatives in, in every country say, you know, it is the most incredible honour to represent your people. Um, and it really, really is. Like every day, and any TD will tell you this, uh, you know, quietly behind the scenes, and it's not posturing or anything, mm. like every day that you walk into or drive into Leinster House, uh, you you do get this... A feeling of oh my god you know I'm I'm here as a as a part of a very small number of people yeah. 166 people uh, we can argue whether or not it should be you know a, a bit less but actually when you go to the chamber and see it it's tiny it's a little room yeah. it actually used to be the the lecture theatre for the school of art and Michael Collins was told after the after the the war uh, war of independence go off quickly and find us a, a, a place so we went there the 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 or DS, the Royal Dublin Society owned us he. W- went in, walked around, looked at the art studio or the art lecture theatre and said, right, this will do. This is what we'll have. So it's very small and mm. 166 you really do fit into it uh, uh, very well. So to walk in there as one of 166 people, obviously there's the Senate as well uh, uh, as well there, um, at this time of really, really serious crisis, you know, when mm. there's horrendous stuff going on, uh, that you're part of Team Ireland is kind of, you know, how I maybe slightly kitschly uh, think about it, is the most extraordinary thing. Or in the evening, you know, driving back to Greystones, when you when you go through the Lachlanstown roundabout and hit that wonderful part of the, the M11 that brings you back through the Glen of the Downs, it is the most incredible feeling of pride uh, to be able to say, I'm one out of five people who basically have to fight for, protect, represent all of the people in mm. this wonderful, wonderful county. It's, uh, it's an amazing thing. And, and as an independent yeah. and a backbencher, um, can, do you feel you can do that? Yeah, I mean, how it's how it's played out, uh, I didn't know. I During the campaign, I'd say every single hour, 18, 19, 20 hours a day, someone said to me, first of all, you're not going to get elected. Can't be done. You mm-hmm. know, you've no money, you've no profile, you've no party, you've no hair, you're not a particularly uh, uh, entertaining person. Yeah, I'm going to hope. Um, and the second thing they'd say to you is, even if somehow um, the people of Wicklow and East Carlow elect you, there's nothing an independent can do. You are wasting your time, you know. Mm-hmm. I had one colleague of mine who's an ex-lobbyist, and when I told him, he kind of sighed, looked at me over a pint of Guinness, <laughs> and he said, Stephen, look, here's how Ireland works. First of all, as an independent coming from nowhere, 
you're not going to get in. Even if you get in, you'll be in the opposition backbenches, and you so therefore you can't affect anything. Even if you wanted to join one of the government par- government parties, you'd be a government backbencher, and then you can actually do even less because then you're not even allowed to sort of ob- object. Mm. He said, even if you were brought in and immediately. Uh, 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 projected to the status of senior minister. There's nothing you can do because the civil service runs everything anyway. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so what I have found is, um, is, is quite the opposite. What I have found is the way it's worked out, there's obviously Sinn Féin, Fianna Fáil and the technical groups. There's three independent groups, roughly the same number of people. On the finance and, and the economics and the IMF and all of this stuff that's going on, which is one of the main areas I ran on because yeah. it's what I'm trained in. Mm. Um, You've got Pierce Doherty, who's Sinn Féin spokesperson on this on this stuff. You've got Michael McGrath, who's Fianna Fáil spokesperson on this stuff. And then within the technical group, there's probably maybe about three of us who would talk on this quite a lot. So what I have found, uh, and I absolutely didn't know this when I when I decided in late November, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna stand and see what happens, uh, is that I I think I've become one of a relatively small number of people in opposition. Uh, who really are pushing the government and challenging them and calling them on a lot of the things they're doing some good stuff but you know, as you know the hmm. u turns that they've done on some stuff would uh, would make james bond uh, uh, proud you know but by by pointing that out by pressing them on certain matters and this is the way these things have to work of course but uh, d- d- have you found have you been able to chart ah i made a difference there i pressed them on this point and yeah. they changed their mind or they are they are they even slightly moderated something uh, y- yes so in fair so a few things in fairness in fairness to the government in fair, and, and to their cabinet they have been extremely open. I have spoken to quite a number of them. Um, various speeches or, or Q&A we've done in the Dáil, ministers, junior ministers or, or, or uh, government backbenchers have referenced, you know, as Deputy Donnelly said or, or, mm. or, or so forth. I think, though, I mean, obviously I'm not in Cabinet and therefore I don't get to make the decisions and, and, and inf- you know, directly influence the, the legislation. So then the question is, well, how do you have influence? Because that's what you're there for, yeah. right? And for me, part of it is around helping change the national conversation and helping really challenge some of the assumptions. So, for example, um, when I stood up to run, one of the things that I started saying was, look, you understand we are not being bailed out. We are bailing out the German and the French banks. Mm. And I was laughed at. People were wiping the tears from their eyes and telling me it's called the IMF bailout for a reason. Um, and I and I firmly believed it then. I firmly believe it now. And there was I was listening to uh, Miriam O'Callaghan, I think it was on uh, a Sunday morning, and she was interviewing a a, a, a a senior French senator, and he was saying, "Well, of course, you know, I mean, of course, you have to move in your corporation tax. Uh, we're bailing you out, you silly, silly little Irish people." And she said, "No, no, you're not. We're bailing you out." Uh, and and. It was amazing to... Oh, I was Marion Finucane, mm, sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, it was amazing to see. I think it's reasonable to say now that we pretty much all agree that we are bailing Europe out. Mm. We know that we are not being bailed out, that we are sending all the money over there. Now, myself and a very small number of people have been saying that consistently for the last 16 weeks. So in terms of having... Uh, influence and hopefully, hopefully in a very positive way, which is why you know why wh- wh- why I'm doing this. I think that's a great example, and I think that does two things. I think first of all, it puts a lot of pressure on the government because they can't keep saying, "Well, come on, we have to play our part because the Europeans are bailing yeah. us out." Number one, and they you know they don't say that anymore. They've changed how they how they frame some of these things, and also I hope it actually gives the government some space. So do you remember when Minister Noonan said in New York with kind of the 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 White House and the IMF? behind his back, you know what, we're going to burn some senior Anglo bond holders. Yeah. Um, I think helping create the pressure in our society that says, you know what, this is morally grotesque, actually gives him and the government the space to say, okay, you know what, let's take a few risks, let's start playing hardball. So, mm. yes, I absolutely do. I didn't know how much influence uh, ability uh, we'd have it's more than I'd hoped. And we're just getting going. I mean, we're only four or four months in. I've just set up the team. I've got a fantastic team in place. We're going to be open in a constituency office. We're finally getting ahead. We're finally saying, right, what legislation is coming up? You know, and mm. starting to put our own counter proposals in place. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting. Okay, I do take a commercial break, but I do want to talk a wee bit more about, uh, obviously, the, the Grig situation and everything uh, uh, coming up in, back in a couple of minutes. Moncrief 